So now that we discussed what the concepts mean, let's go into why they are relevant in software engineering. So why will we, for example, want to have diversity and inclusion in a software engineering context, in a company, in a team? Uh, isn't it just better to have everyone be the same and it's easier? Um, there are a number of, of points and I'll just go through them in, uh, in no particular order and then go into some challenges that are particularly common in software engineering. Um, and we can start off with, with the idea that, well, you might want to have diversity simply from an ethical perspective, that it's the right way, uh, the right thing to do. So you have a certain society, like the population here in Iceland, that is diverse. There are genders, there are different age groups, there are different languages, different nationalities, and it's just the right thing to somehow reflect this in your workforce that you have a true representation of the differences that exist in the population. So you could, from that standpoint, say we want to reflect the Icelandic, the US or whatever uh, nation that you are in, or generally on, on a different level. Then, similarly, on an ethical level, you might just say that, well, diversity, we think this is really important. Uh, it matters to us. It's the right thing to do. So we value this here at the company, and that's why uh, we want to hire diverse, for example. And then, last but not least, well, you might see some benefits uh, that differences between people actually lead to different talents, and that could be an advantage. So this is already going away a bit from the purely ethical point of view and saying this is the right thing, but there might also be some advantages for you as an employer, for example. And that's what we go into now more. So, of course, as a private company, you could take the standpoint and say, well, I don't care about those things. Uh, in the end of the day, what matters is that we are running as a business and we are making money. So how should diversity help us in this? Uh, I think it's only blocking us. So there are a number of uh, points that are really in favor of having diverse software engineering teams and software engineering uh, organizations. And that goes a bit into this direction. One of them is that, uh, it has been shown that diverse teams are generally more innovative and more creative than non-diverse teams. So there are more opinions, that differences, there might be different talents, and that leads to generally a more innovative and creative uh, environment in your company. So that usually affects the end product. You might have more innovative features, for example, that could give you a uh, competitive advantage. So that's one thing. Another point is that diverse teams tend to be more productive. Through the diversity, there's somehow a better climate, maybe because of the inclusion that everyone feels welcome. But uh, different studies have shown that the productivity goes up. It's important to say here that not every study is very clear cut. I mean, these are human factors. It's very complex situations. So you will definitely also find some studies that say, okay, this is not always the case. Sometimes it can go wrong. Um, and also at the beginning of this course, I talked about how difficult it can be to get a team to a certain productive state. And all of that plays in here as well. But generally, diverse teams that are inclusive, where people feel welcome, tend to be more productive. Then, um, we can talk about recruitment. So many companies in the IT world all over the globe have issues recruiting enough talent. And if you, for example, say, I don't want women in my company, well, then you're approximately getting rid of 50% of the potential candidates that you could hire. So in that sense, it's a really stupid idea. Uh, on the other hand, if you really try to be as diverse as possible, you are actually reflecting the society. So in some sense, you're maximizing the amount of potential talent that you can attract. So you can hire more people and that's in that sense a really smart move. So diversity gives you more option for hiring as well. If you also tend to have a very inclusive environment, then uh, it also usually helps with keeping people on board so you have less staff turnover. So it's not only recruitment, but it's also the turnover. There will be fewer people leaving your company because they don't feel welcome. Uh, so those two things are something that most 
uh, software companies really care about because it's really hard to attract talent and to keep it. Then there is an economic, a direct economic uh, impact of diversity. And that has to do in part with having multiple talents, but also reflecting the society. Usually, if you have a more diverse company, you are also building more diverse products. So in many, uh, for example, in many uh, software tools that are being built, accessibility is something that's considered very, very late. So make it, for example, adaptations to people that are red, green blind or blind at all that can't read. Those things often come very late. Yet, if you look at statistics, about 20% of people in the world have some kind of disability. So if you can attract these, not only in recruitment, not only as workforce, but also in your products, then you have a much, much larger, larger user base. And similarly, if, you are, if it's obvious, if it's evident that your company is very diverse, it's usually also attracting more customers that are from a diverse background. Uh, in contrast to a company that has the reputation to, for example, uh, only care about men as developers and uh, not take women into account. So that affects the user base as well, usually. So those are things why, even if you don't at all care about the ethical part and what's right, this is something you should consider when you are hiring or when you set up your, your company profile because they ultimately affect your success and your product as well. And that's also why uh, you see a lot of the big software companies in the world like Google, like Microsoft, having tremendous efforts into diversity and inclusion. Hopefully also because of the ethical point of view, but at the very least money talks so you can be sure that they care about this thing here on uh, the right hand side. And then uh, these are general things and they might affect not only software engineering, not only computer science, but also more generally, for example, engineering product development. But there are, of course, a number of challenges that we face in the computer science, in the software engineering space in particular. Uh, and groups that uh, typically are underrepresented or don't feel welcome are, of course, women very often. So we have underrepresentation of women uh, and about 74% in, in one of the statistics that uh, I will link in the slides, about 74% of women in IT jobs said that at some point they have uh, experienced discrimination, which is a very high number. And similar numbers you'll find, for example, for minorities, like people of color, uh, Hispanics or other groups. In, this, of course, depends a lot in where you are on the globe. So in the US, of course, there's a very strong focus on people of color and Hispanic people. Uh, here in Iceland, for instance, this is currently not as much of a debate. But if you, for instance, look at the population, and I think nowadays 10% uh, of the population in Iceland has Polish roots. If you compare that with both the students, but also the workforce, in IT, you will see that there is not much representation. That has different reasons, but it's definitely something that probably needs to be considered in the future, uh, both when it comes to the sort of economic incentives, but also the ethical point of view. Um, other groups that are often discriminated against or that face challenges are, for example, first generation uh, students. So students at university whose parents did not study and they very often simply don't have the same starting point. They don't get the same support at home maybe and that can easily translate into the work life as well. So they simply don't have the same standing in the beginning. They don't get the same good start that students get that come from an academic background in the family. Um, and then are some other groups. Neurodiversity is something I have discussed in this course. So uh, students with disorders that affect, for example, how they communicate, ADHD, autism spectrum, dyslexia, uh, they might face challenges in the work life. And a lot of them can be accommodated, at least to some extent, uh, so that they, are, uh, that they feel more welcome, but also that they can be more productive, that they can actually work productively without uh, as many challenges. And the list goes on. Uh, other groups are LGBT, uh, LGBTQ+, 
for example. And uh, there are initiatives for all of these to, uh, to encourage that environments at universities but at companies are more inclusive uh, and that there's more diversity in these. But these are definitely the challenges that we are facing in software engineering to increase the diversity in particular with these groups. Um, this concludes why we should have this, but I will now in a last video summarize the kind of typical challenges uh, that we see as a result of having a non-diverse uh, developer population generally.